I recently ran my first ever marathon in a time of 3 hours and 20 minutes and there were so many things I wish I'd known before the big day. Well in today's video I'm going to share with you 7 things I wish I'd known before running my first marathon and if you stick around to the end of the video I'll give you an extra 3 tips which helped me get across the finish line in one piece. So to kick things off, your training won't go perfectly and that is completely okay. Sure, there's going to be weeks where you smash every single workout and hit all of your targets for that week. But just be prepared for the weeks where you ever so slightly fall short of hitting these targets. Because marathon training at its core is about showing up and being consistent rather than being 100% on every single session. I need cheese. Now you might not want to hear this, but you're going to eat a lot of food throughout your marathon training and you're gonna need to. Chances are your weekly volume is going to increase along with your weekly intensity and therefore all that extra energy your body's not used to burning is going to need to be replaced in some way and one of the best ways to do that is by eating more food. <sighs> And just as a little bonus tip, it is completely normal to gain weight throughout marathon training because of the extra food and liquid you're putting into your body. But don't worry, you will still look stellar when it comes to race day. Now be prepared because marathon training will take up the majority of free time you had left especially if you're like me and you're training for a marathon whilst working a full-time job. There was countless occasions, social gatherings, and even events that I said no to because I wanted to prioritize sleep, good recovery, and having my weekends free for long runs. However, don't feel like you have to say no to absolutely everything it is definitely possible to train for a marathon and still have a social life. As long as you had one prior to your marathon training. <laughs> Moving on, my next tip is to trust the process. Marathon training is scary and for any first timer it's probably going to be the most daunting training block of your entire running career. But that is exactly why you need to take it one step at a time and just focus on the little wins from each week. I can remember clear as day wondering how I was going to be able to run 22 miles in training, let alone 26 miles on race day. But I trusted my training and lo and behold, it got me through every last mile. Now the next tip is a big one, which I heard rumors about before my race, but I didn't quite believe them. And it's that on race day, you're going to run further than 26.2 miles. Or 42 kilometers for all the kilometer people. And the honest reason for this is you're probably going to be sharing the course with hundreds, if not thousands of other runners. So not only are you not going to be able to stick to the optimal course line, but you're probably going to overtake some people throughout the race, which is just going to add on extra distance to your run. Unless you're in the elite starting field, in which case this doesn't apply to you and just consider yourself lucky. Now completing a marathon is possible by just running, but if you really want to feel your best on race day and reduce the chance of getting an injury, you might want to add in regular SNC sessions throughout your week. Speaking of which, I should probably go to the gym. Now this doesn't have to be an elaborate two hour gym session three times a week. In fact, in most cases, you don't even need to leave your home. By simply doing a 30 minute at home workout one or two times a week, you will massively reduce the chance of getting injured and you'll probably get a little bit faster too. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a double win right there.
I wish I'd known before running my first marathon is to research the route. This might seem really boring at first, but trust me, it is going to help you in so many different ways come race day. By researching your course, you're going to know where aid stations are going to be, what the elevation of the course is going to be like, and even areas of the course to watch out for, and so much more. This means come race day, you'll be so much more prepared and you won't be going into those 26.2 miles completely blind. This video required a little more time to film than what I was anticipating and because of that it's now the next day. However the video is not quite over just yet. You see I'm actually going to give you three more tips of things I already knew before running my first marathon because even though it goes against the title of the video I still want you to know them before you get to race day. Now, this is going to sound a bit backwards, but the marathon actually starts at mile 20. The first 18 to 20 miles of a marathon, dare I say it, should feel pretty comfortable. And that's because this is the distance that most people get to whilst they're training. But that final 10k is going to test your body in a way which is pretty much impossible to prepare for. And yeah, it's probably going to hurt, and it's probably going to take everything out of you. But there is no feeling comparable to when you finally cross that finish line on your first ever marathon. Now pretty pretty please do this next one for me and practice your fueling strategy. I practiced mine every single week on my long run religiously to ensure that I nailed absolutely everything when it came to race day. And I really do mean practice everything. What gels are you going to take? When are you going to take them? Where are you going to store them? Are you going to take on water? Are you going to take the gels that they provide on the day or are you going to take your own? Practice, practice, practice. Also, uh, bonus tip number two of the video, remember the phrase nothing new on race day which essentially means if you haven't tried something in training then it's probably not a great idea to try it for the first time on race day practice and then my final tip of the video which will hopefully make the big day enjoyable no matter what is to have more than one goal when it comes to race day. To help with this, try setting yourself an A goal, a B goal and a C goal. Your A goal being the target for if everything goes perfectly on race day. Your B goal being some sort of mid ground and then the C goal being something which is near on impossible to fail even if everything goes wrong on race day. This way you can walk away from your marathon or any race for that matter knowing that you achieved some sort of goal that you set for yourself. Now hopefully these tips will help make marathon day a little less daunting and will help you to prepare for what's to come. However, sometimes you do just need to embrace the chaos that comes with running a marathon and try your absolute hardest to expect the unexpected. If you've enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like as it genuinely means the absolute world to me. And if you want to see more videos just like this in your subscription feed every single week, then consider hitting that subscribe button whilst you're down there. That's all from me today. I hope you have a smashing day and I'll see you all next Saturday at 6 p.m. No bad days. <laughs>